This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is not how you build muscles. This is the 2024 Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. That's Gen 12, which makes me feel old because I do remember Gen 1, and I remember reviewing it still. So we have 12 generations of refinement, which means what's happened? Obviously, it still somehow manages to stay rigid and mill spec, but gets lighter. So now we're down to 2.42 pounds, which is 1.09 kilograms, which is 100 grams less than the last generation, which is about three ounces because, gosh, it was so heavy before, wasn't it? Okay, we're going to look at it now. So as you might guess, for this year, we have Intel Meteor Lake U-Series CPUs. That's 14th gen for Ultrabooks. So latest, greatest with the AI coprocessor on board. You can get it with Core Ultra 5 or Core Ultra 7, with or without vPro. That's up to you inside. And we have a redesign going on here, too. So the trackpad got a bit bigger. It's still not, like, huge, comically large, like you would see on some macbook clones that sort of thing but it's it's gotten bigger it's it's fine so okay keyboard has a little bit of revision the fn and the control keys are now just like every other laptop keyboard instead of doing that weird thing pad switch them around thing and you have little tactile locators for those who are visually impaired still the same white backlighting and the excellent tactile feel that you get that makes people say Ooh, what's better than a thing pad keyboard it's great stuff the speakers now fire from underneath the keyboard and manage to not sound muffled when typing, which is good. And it's still a spill resistant keyboard. So there's some membranes and channels or something like that there. So it all manages to work out. Ports physically might move around for this generation, but you still have the same excellent selection. You got two USB-A ports. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one of which is used by the USB-C 65 watt charger that's included. A headphone jack on board and HDMI 2.1, and optionally, if you get the 4G or the 5G option, which is 5G sub six, there would be a nano SIM card slot. So for something this thin and light, right, you know, what's the excuse, Apple and Dell, with only USB-C ports? They managed somehow with this skinny light thing to get all the ports you need on board. You can get it with a full HD plus or a 2.8K OLED display, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And both the IPS, Full HD Plus and the OLED 2.8K options are available with and without touch. That is your choice. We have the OLED model, which right now I can't find on Lenovo's website. I don't know what's going on. Probably just out of stock right now, but you can find it in third party retailers. We have an Amazon link right now for that one. Anyway, that's what we have. Oh my God, it's a non touch. And much as I enjoyed using touchscreens, th this anti-glare coating is so effective because OLED displays are always glossy, so their beauty is somewhat messed up often by the glare or by that thick kind of glass you see put on some OLED laptops that just diminishes the experience. This is just an amazing 120 hertz display, 2880 by 1800 resolution, but it is so sharp and crispy looking and the colors seem even more saturated because there's no glare. Well done, Lenovo. Uh, when you get the IPS or the OLED, you're looking at a 400 nit display. It does support HDR 500 if you get the OLED display. And in terms of the metrics you can see on screen, boy, it measures up really well here. It's very nice. I mean, for what is a business laptop, even though it's their Halo or flagship kind of that everybody wants to have among these 14 inch Lenovo business laptops, that's still a surprisingly pleasant thing. The speakers also are surprisingly pleasant too. You got two two watt speakers with Dolby Atmos support on board and they sound really good and they have some bass and it, again, you know, it's not just a business laptop. Obviously, I would love this for watching Netflix all day, all night, you know. You have Intel Arc Graphics. You're not going to be using this for playing today's vivid games. However, I mean, it is a super thin and light laptop. What did you expect there? But at least Intel Arc Graphics is a lot faster than the outgoing Iris XE graphics from previous generations. So older games, yeah, I mean, they'll run fine in casual games, but that's not really what it's for. It's for business and productivity work and all that sort of thing, which it does plenty well. It does Photoshop just fine. You could do some light video editing just fine. Now it's a U-series CPU and it's very thin. So, you know, if you push it hard for a long time, there will be some thermal throttling. That's to be expected. This is not a mobile workstation class machine, but for every day getting your business stuff done, your schoolwork done, that's what it's for. That's what it's great at. For biometrics, you have both a 1080p 
webcam with privacy shutter that has Windows Hello IR, and you have a fingerprint scanner that is embedded in the keyboard deck. The 1080p camera is okay. It's typical like every other 1080p camera. Uh, interesting, the ThinkPad T14S, I believe, has a 5 megapixel webcam for those of you who really want to look your best when you video conference. We have Intel Wi-Fi AX211, no surprise, like just about every other laptop of this generation, and that's Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.3. Again, WAN, that is optional if you want to have it. We have a 57 watt hour battery, and again, like I said, 65 watt USB-C compact charger is included, and uh, that's a decent capacity battery. I mean, they have to keep it light. They're not going to throw an 80 watt hour battery inside this laptop, are they? Battery life is really going to vary. I know some reviews dinged it on its battery life because they sent out the OLED to most all of us reviewers. Uh, you know, if you got the IPS screen, I'm sure the battery life would be much better. It's much lower resolution, a full HD plus, it's not OLED. Uh, so for us, for this lovely, lovely OLED model with brightness at 200 nits for a mixed productivity, that sort of thing, I, I was getting about six, six and a half hours, which is average for an OLED thin and light 14 inch laptop. Streaming video would last longer doing heavier duty work. You know, you're doing your Photoshop or crunching a mega spreadsheet in Excel, shorter run times. I would expect to get two hours more out of the IPS display option. To take off the bottom cover, there's just four Phillips head screws. There is a little plastic clip here, so just don't worry. Give it a nice yank up here and take off the bottom cover. And here are the internals. Two fans are now spread out over here with the heat sink in the middle. That's a change from the previous generation. The M.2 SSD is here under a copper heat sink, so good for thermals. If you've got the optional WAN, 4G or 5G, that would go over here. The Wi-Fi card is soldered on board. Happily, it's a good Intel AX211 card, so you probably don't want to do anything with that. And here is the battery. RAM is soldered on like just about every slim ultrabook on the planet these days. And why are those speakers so loud and full? Well, here, look at this. This hole here is the, the driver unit for each of the two 2 watt speakers right there firing through the keyboard. That's pretty beefy stuff there. So that's the Gen 12 Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Again, you got a redesign here. Oh yeah, also, you know, you have this little, it's weird looking, isn't it? Sort of, you've got this here, so they can house the camera array without mm, putting bigger borders around the display. It does give you a lift point, but anyway, uh, you can tell you got a Gen 12 right away if you got that on there. I, it's still iconic, even after 12 years, you know, nothing looks quite like it, except for maybe a ThinkPad T14S. Lenovo's own also. And it holds up well against the competitors. You look at this versus, say, the Dell XPS 14 with its only USB-C ports. And for a business person who needs to plug in stuff all the time and is on the go, you got all the ports you need here. You've got the phenomenal OLED display option and anti-glare at that if you can give up the touchscreen feature. And if you need longer battery life, you do have the IPS. Um, it's sturdy. It's still iconic and it's still a good product. It is still expensive though. I mean, it starts around $2,000. And interestingly enough, if you get it from Lenovo, you just get an IPS display for $2,000. But if you look and buy it from other merchants, you might find it decked out like we have with the Core 7 Ultra and the OLED display and 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte SSD still for $2,000. So shop around. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.